my name is Stacey. Here I am in front of a shearing shed at Savernac Station in southern New South Wales. As you can see, the shearing shed is very old. It was built in 1912 and it's still used today. Inside the shearing shed is a large piece of paper nailed to the wall. Let's go inside and have a look. For nearly 150 years, this piece of paper has been recording something pretty important. It's a bit dirty in places, but if we look closely, it tells a pretty interesting story. This piece of paper shows how the Sloan ancestors, since 1863, have been recording the rainfall for our property. It shows how variable our rainfall has been from highs to lows. It tells us that since the records were first started, the rainfall has varied from year to year. Some years we get lots of rain and good crops, even floods. Some years we have less rain or dry years, poor crops, even droughts. So this piece of paper tells us that this part of the Murray-Darling Basin has had wet years and dry years, floods and droughts, good years and bad years. So Anne, is this the same in other parts of the Murray-Darling Basin? Oh yes it is. The Murray-Darling Basin is one of the largest in the world but it's also one of the driest. The rainfall across the basin is highly variable from year to year as we can clearly see on our rainfall chart. So where does all this rain come from? You might say it simply just falls out of the sky, but in the Murray-Darling Basin, it's a bit more complicated than that. It is all tied up with what we call the water cycle, or more simply, the way water moves around, literally in cycles or circles. This amazing water cycle starts in the sea, where most of the world's water is found. As the air above the sea warms, the water changes from drops into gas or vapour. This is called evaporation. This vapour then travels with winds and enters the Murray-Darling Basin from all directions. When this water vapour crosses the land, it starts to cool down and begins to create clouds. This is called condensation. As the clouds cool and they travel over hills or mountains, the vapour turns back into drops and falls as rain, snow or hail. This is called precipitation. When this rain falls, some soaks into the ground. Some of the water is taken up by plants and given off as vapour. We call this transpiration. Some water soaks deep into the ground and is known as groundwater. The rain that doesn't soak into the ground or is taken up by plants runs downhill into creeks, rivers, lakes and wetlands. The creeks and rivers flow downhill and slowly make their way into our rivers and eventually the sea. Because of the variable rainfall, some rivers in the Murray-Darling Basin don't flow all year round. In fact, they may even dry up some years, like the Darling River does. When the rivers do flow, they eventually join the Murray River, which flows to its end near Goolwa in South Australia. At the end of the Murray, or at its mouth, the remaining water flows into the sea. And yes, you guessed it right, the whole process starts all over again. That's why we call it the water cycle. But why is the water cycle so important in the Murray-Darling Basin? Let's ask David Harris. Water is not an infinite resource, and so we have to work out how best we manage that and divert, um, you know, share it between our community uses in terms of town water supply, our industry uses, and our agricultural uses. But water, clouds and rain also have minds of their own. Clouds don't always appear, and rain doesn't always fall when and where we want it to. That's why we get dry years and wet years, floods and droughts. We even get times when rain falls on one part of a farm or town, but not on the other. So why is rainfall across the Murray-Darling Basin so variable? Why does it rain in some years and not others? And how does this affect the communities that live in this huge basin? In Australia we're subject to more variability of climate than anywhere else in the world. So we have longer drought sequences and we have more intense flood cycles. The first day after the drought it buckets rain and we have a lot of floods, then you've got to start planning for the next drought. During the middle of the course of a drought you've got to start planning for the next flood. Even though rainfall may vary across the Murray-Darling Basin, this water plays an important part in keeping our towns, farms, businesses and environments healthy. In fact, water and rivers are so important, we need to celebrate them and make sure we look after them. Let's look at how water and rivers play such an important role in our lives. 
Well, rivers are extremely important for food production because uh, they carry the stored water uh, from our catchments into uh, our food growing areas for us to uh, grow food and fibre to feed humanity. Our rivers and waterways are really important to keep our environment healthy. They provide water for the plants, for mammals, for reptiles, birds, insects and of course our unique native fish. We have some amazing visitors to our rivers and wetlands in Australia. Some migratory birds travel from as far away as Russia or China. It provides us drinking water. It's used for flushing our toilets, watering our gardens, our lawns, our recreation areas, our sporting playing fields and so on, so that the people are not only benefiting from the water in their house, but in the town as well. Our rivers and our, our creeks and wetlands and swamps and things were created by our ancestral bees back in the dream time. Most of our medicines grow in and around wetlands. A lot of our foods grow around wetlands and a lot of herbs and things as well, but it provides us with a lot of other natural resources that help us make things that we need. Well, for us, um, water is the reason where we come to work every day. We're interested in how rivers and wetlands work, um, how they change, how they respond to stress, um, and how they deliver all the things that we like about them. So, you know, the birds, the fresh water. We're all river dwellers. We've we have a close affinity to the river and, and, and to the wetlands. The role of scientists is to understand how natural systems, rivers and wetlands function, how they manage to keep the birds happy, the trees happy and the fish happy. We then um, provide advice to the government about how much water a, a river needs to keep it healthy. Our school's very lucky to be on the riverbank of the Edward River. It gives us uh, an outdoor learning space that we utilise quite a lot. The children have a strong connection. A lot of them live along the river or uh, undertake leisure activities along the river. As a school we've undertaken many learning units to do with water and the connection of families in our area to the river and that's been a wonderful way for us to place learning in a really meaningful context for our children. Uh, there's a myriad of crops and food crops as well as fibre that uh, feeds and clothes people around the world. Wow, so many people and places all wanting water from our rivers. The rivers and creeks also provide beauty, inspiration and quiet places. We obviously need to share the water and make sure it is clean and healthy. But how can we look after our rivers and our precious water? How can we use the water more efficiently and wisely? Reuse their water, use it wisely, uh, address things like uh, dripping taps and leaking toilet systems. All looking after water quality and, and enhancing our environment goes hand in hand with food production because we as farmers have been doing that for a long time. So what about young people? Students are involved in many activities, not only at school, but in partnership with farmers, land care groups, local government, community groups, business and catchment management authorities. Many students in the Murray-Darling Basin have been looking after our precious water and rivers for years. The community and students bring a love of nature, um, a love of their community and a love of their local river to scientists. Our young people are interested in, in um, the health and well-being of our water. It takes serious amounts of water to produce our food. It's extremely important that we are conscious about the environment on our farms. We've found out that water is just one of our most crucial resources and I think it's important everyone is aware of the value of water and the necessity to conserve water and protect the environment so that we, for decades to come, we can continue using water and having the environment there which provides our production, provides our quality of life and provides for our standard of living. The water cycle is not only critical in maintaining the environment and health of our rivers, but also to supply water for human consumption, economic well-being and to produce food to sustain our communities and our nation. It is also important to recognise that this water cycle has relevance to the entire Australian landscape. Regardless of where the rain falls, it affects all of our lives, whether we live in coastal cities and remote rural communities. Showers in Perth 
a drought in Western Queensland, storms in Darwin, a dry spell in Hobart and floods in Lake Eyre may be far away from many of us, but they are all influenced by this water cycle. And they all affect us, whether we live in Broken Hill or Brisbane, Gundawindi or Goolwa. But the good news is, water is the ultimate renewable resource. It doesn't disappear after we've used it. It's a part of the water cycle and it can be used again and again. So that in a snapshot is how the water cycle works so hard to fill our rivers and provides the water that has so many uses. We know that rainfall and river flows will always be variable in the Murray-Darling Basin and we can expect more droughts and more floods, good years and bad years. We have seen how important water and rivers are for all sorts of people and communities both inside and outside the Murray-Darling Basin. So the next time you're sitting under a gum tree, having a glass of water or eating some food, remember that this experience comes courtesy of the water cycle. It also comes courtesy of our rivers, our water managers, our farmers, our irrigators, and a lot of people trying to make the best use of this precious commodity. Water and the water cycle, worth celebrating and worth looking after.